Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Mark Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. exotic animals on a daily basis and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. on Coast Canines, Thursday on ABC 7 News at 6. Manatee County Sheriff's Office identifies the deputy involved in a recent deadly shooting. Plus, a Sarasota High School employee without a job tonight will show you the video circling social media that led to her firing. And more details on a video that led to a lockdown at Riverview High School this morning. Your Suncoast News starts now. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at 6. Your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Thanks for joining us this evening. We lead off tonight with the weather because it was a cold day on the Sun Coast and cooler temperatures coming tonight as well. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Yeah, and we're talking uh, some pretty chilly weather for Florida here. We're going to be almost 10 degrees below our average. On top of that, there will be a little bit of wind and not much, not enough to issue a wind chill advisory by the National Weather Service. But if you are uh, caught in a little bit of wind, even on the waters, it's going to feel much colder than that to start the morning off tomorrow. Dew point temperature is what we watch for low temperatures, and it's come up one degree since 5 o'clock, so that's a good sign. I think mid-40s. For most people, maybe upper 40s near the area beaches to start things off tomorrow, but uh, just a little bit of wind will make it feel even colder. But the uh, barometer way up there, 30, 21, no problem with any uh, rain or clouds for that matter overnight, and that will allow that temperature to really drop down. Your evening planner, obviously you've already got a jacket on, and it looks like you may need to double up a little bit by 11 o'clock, 47 degrees. Uh, if you're outdoors at 11 o'clock, clear skies there. And a temperature forecast, we will get down to the 30s over parts of the panhandle of Florida. In Tallahassee, uh, we also have a 30-degree reading expected in Jacksonville. By 8 o'clock, though, we will warm up there in Jacksonville, Gainesville. Uh, we'll be back to 47 uh, by, again, 8 o'clock. So kids going to school tomorrow morning we will notice a little bit more of a chill in the morning than this morning. Now, as far as the forecast highs go tomorrow, hey, finally back to 70 degrees in the afternoon, so we will see that. Now, boaters beware. Small craft advisories are still in effect well offshore. We still have rip current advisory in effect. I don't know how many people are swimming this evening, but uh, if you are, uh, it looks like uh, the wind chill advisory will continue. I, I should say the rip current advisory will continue uh, for the next hour or so. High cirrus clouds continue to stream overhead. And uh, that's about it. There's not much more in terms of low-level cloudiness. We'll have a, a detailed look at the next cold front. It promises to bring some rain now uh, on Sunday. More on that coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. New details tonight in last week's deputy-involved shooting in Manatee County. The Sheriff's Office identifying K-9 Deputy Patrick Dryman as the person who shot and killed Corey Mobley on January 23rd. Deputies were responding to a domestic disturbance call at the time. After finding Mobley, deputies say 
He yelled that he had a gun and reached into his waistband. That's when Deputy Dryman shot Mobley, who was later pronounced dead at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Deputy Dryman has been with the Sheriff's Office for nearly 10 years. He's on light duty until an investigation by the Sheriff's Office and State Attorney's Office is complete. A Sarasota High School employee is out of a job this evening after a Snapchat video surfaced of her dancing on a counter at a birthday party. A 17-year-old Riverview High School student next to her drinking what appears to be alcohol. The video was turned over to the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. Investigators say the party was held at Sarasota High School Assistant Principal's house. The school district now also launching its own investigation. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick joins us live tonight from Sarasota High School with more on this developing story. Jess. Jacqueline Scott, a lot of parents assume that Snapchats will always appear in a matter of seconds. That's not always true. They can be saved or screenshotted, or they can be captured from another cell phone. That's exactly what happened here. It's just wrong. We expect our uh, adults to help us. Watch as 39 year old Rowena Short, a registrar at Sarasota High School at the time, dances on a countertop at what the district describes as a birthday party. A 17 year old Riverview High School student's head bumping against her butt, drinking what appears to be alcohol, the caption reading, quote, my girl. Well, you wonder what else is going on that you don't know about. You put your faith in the people and you just assume that they're doing the best that they can. The video was discovered by the Riverview High School principal and turned over to the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. The district also getting involved. And we were able to determine that not only did it involve the registrar at Sarasota High School, but the party itself took place in the home of one of our administrators at Sarasota High School. Deputies interviewed the minor who denied having any relationship with Short. He also claims that he doesn't know who served him alcohol at the party and that he discovered the party on a function of Snapchat called 941 Party. Either the person who was throwing the party announced it to their network and maybe they were a part of that network. Uh, secondarily, maybe they had a filter, so if they had a custom filter and maybe if I'm scrolling through my filters, I see that there's something happening. Ultimately, the sheriff's office was unable to find any evidence that there was or is an inappropriate relationship between Short and the student. Deputies were also unable to determine who supplied the minor with alcohol. We have been informed by the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office that they have concluded their investigation, which gives us to go ahead to begin an investigation of our own. Short was on a six-month probationary period with the district and has been let go. The assistant principal has been reassigned to the district office and will not have any contact with kids until the district investigation is over. They're supposed to look out for us, but when they don't look out for us, it's just doesn't make sense. The assistant principal whose home this party was at has been with the school district since 2014. The district says it will continue to investigate and it will take action as it's warranted. Reporting live in Sarasota, Jess Aldrich, ABC7, yours on Coast News. Okay, thank you so much, Jess. Riverview High School placed on a lockdown this morning in what the sheriff's office is calling a suspicious incident. School officials say a student saw a threat on Snapchat and reported it to administrators. That video appeared to have shown the butt of a gun along with a person indicating a potential threat to campus. Sheriff's investigators have talked with that student who posted the threat and determined that it was not credible. The video in question is no longer accessible, but the sheriff's office says the student involved is cooperating with detectives. The sheriff's office adds that the student denied making any threats or making the video. More than 2,600 teachers in Sarasota County will receive scholarship money from the Sunshine State. It's all part of the annual Best and Brightest program. Traditional and charter school teachers will get more than $4 million in scholarship money. They earn the recognition and money based on strong SAT scores and by getting a high performance rating. Some Florida students also getting more scholarship money getting closer to that a house panel broadened funding today for a plan that would provide scholarships to students who are victims of bullying the program is expected to reach 40 million dollars in its first year to benefit victims of abuse the hope scholarship program would be funded by contributions from drivers when they buy vehicles and then drivers would receive tax credits the bill initially called for a 20 dollar contribution but a house committee changed the amount to 105 dollars making more money available for those scholarships to private schools.
Plans to expand Bradenton's Riverwalk continue to move forward. A public meeting just got underway at Manatee United Methodist Church, where the engineering consultant on the project and city officials are taking input from people. The current plan is to expand the popular Riverwalk about a mile to the east, beginning at 9th Street East, and Riverside Drive East to 14th Street East. Th those involved in the project are hoping for constructive feedback from the public. This has become the crown jewel of Bradenton. Um, we're building it around our most important asset, which is the Manatee River. Um, and it's right on uh, the biggest growing asset, which is downtown. And it really combines those two into the perfect way to get people to come down here and enjoy their time, whether they work down here, live down here, or just visiting. Another public meeting is scheduled at the Manatee United Methodist Church for this Thursday, starting at 6 p.m. Sounds like they're making something that's already great even better there yeah. in Bradenton. Great for that area. Yep. Still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, how a big mistake at an emergency conference in Manatee County is leading to changes for future warnings. And why two Venice police officers are being hailed as heroes for their work. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability, has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. I'm Alan Cohn. Puerto Ricans changing Florida's political landscape. Tens of thousands moved to the Sunshine State after Maria. How will this impact future elections? Tomorrow on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Clear sign language translation at a Manatee County emergency conference in the days leading up to Hurricane Irma has caught the eye of the state. A House panel approving a bill today that would require officials to include 
qualified sign language interpreters at televised hurricane briefings. Interpreters would have to be certified by the National Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf or Florida Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf. This comes after an interpreter mistakenly gave a warning about pizza and a big bear as Hurricane Irma was coming toward Florida. The bill's sponsor says at first he chuckled at the incident, but says it's not anything but funny for hearing impaired residents. Two Venice Police Department employees being called heroes tonight. They saved a man who was in cardiac arrest yesterday afternoon. The two civilian service aides were patrolling the Lake Venice Golf Course parking lot when they encountered a man who was unconscious. He had suffered a heart attack. The two men began life-saving procedures, including CPR and using a defibrillator. They were able to bring that man back to consciousness a few moments later. We cleared it. It shocked the victim. I did one round of CPR. After that one round of CPR was over, we saw the color come back to the patient. The man is now recovering at the hospital. Doctors say the two service aides likely saved the man's life. Well, stay with us. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will have a look at your first alert weather forecast for the evening when we come back. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service, it's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. This is your brain, this is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why it is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking an experienced broadcast engineer to provide technical support for all broadcast equipment. TV broadcast background required. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. Well, you know, I know it was a little cool today, but uh, when those clouds got out of here, it was yeah. just a uh, <laughs> deep blue sky. It was, it was and, and you know, tomorrow's going to be even more spectacular. After a little bit colder start, too, we're going to be down in the 40s tomorrow, yeah. mid-40s. Uh, so just a little bit of a chill, but not uh, nothing to worry about. No plant bringing in or covering yeah. up or anything right. like that, so we don't have to worry about that. But the surf's been up, and that's been the biggest concern for coastal residents there and folks visiting the beaches. And uh, the surfers have been trying to get out there and catch some waves. Well, Cindy Desmond getting that shot. You see that blue sky behind there. And this one was sent in by Jane Hunter to PixitMySunCoast.com. She actually went to MySunCoast.com forward slash Osprey. And you can see the Ospreys that are hanging out right here at the studio, high above the studios here in 10th Street in downtown Sarasota. So get a look at that. And I'd be remiss if I didn't show this. My wife's uh, me, our anniversary today. Happy anniversary, Susan. That's my wife. She's nice. 
And uh, she actually couldn't get to the dinner tonight because she's watching her granddaughter, Marley, who's recovering from surgery at All Children's yesterday uh, with the tonsils taken out. So she had her tonsils and adenoids taken out. And she said, you better show that, Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa? That weighs a webcam showing.